Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bhavamit Joshi and in today's video, we are going to discuss about biomechanics of mandible fractures. To understand this, let's talk about one simple bone fracture first. Let's say this is a bone and due to whatever reason, it has got fractured. Now when this bone gets fractured, we have two fragments, right? And because the bone is attached with multiple muscles and there are certain factors which can pull these fragments separately. Now what do we do in the treatment of fractures is we do the reduction that means we bring these parts together and then we fix them. For fixation we need to use a technique that can keep both these objects together both these bone fragments together. So one of one such thing is mini plate so when we are using this mini plate what we are doing we are using a plate and then we are fixing them with help of the screw right and when we fix them this uh, fractured fragments are joined together and even when forces are applied on them they will not be separated right so here what is happening we did reduction that is we brought them together and then we did the fixation now this example that we just now talked about this mini plate fixation it works on the principle of load sharing load sharing means now in the same example itself if we talk when the bone is joined together by this mini plates if here we have forces applied on this bone due to function if the fixation was not there, there are chances that these fragments will get separated again and again there will be space between them. They will get separate from each other, right? But because this mini plate is fixed on them, because this mini plate is fixed on them, it is sharing the load which is being applied on the bone. It is sharing this load and it is preventing from the separation from taking place right so for the success of this reduction and fixation we want the fragments to be joined together with stability and this stability can be provided by such mini plates that we just now talked now if we talk in specific about the mandible fracture if we're talking about mandible fracture we need to know which are the places where you can put this mini plates right so we need to know first which areas are safe and we can say which areas where the screw can be placed safely plus successfully so there are two things first thing you it should be successful to osteo integrate Osteo integration should take place and second thing is it should be safe so for osteo integration to take place we need a bone which is having thick cortices so in mandible what is the structure of mandible we know that surrounding part of the bone is thick cortex and within the cortex we have the cancellous bone right so this surrounding cortex is the part where you can place the screws where they will get osteo integrated if screw is placed on them they will get osteo integrated and it can be helpful in treating these fractures got it so first we want to know which are the areas where successful osteo integration can take place so for such thing we need thick cortical bone now which are such areas where we have thick cortical bones so this area are first if we talk about from canine to canine anterior region the bone is thick cortical bone on the buccal aspect both on the superior part of this bone as well as the inferior border it is a thick cortical bone right other part where this thick cortical bone is available is our external oblique ridge this external oblique ridge region is having thick cortical bone where screws can be placed successfully without any kind of chances of loss of osteointegration you can say right this is where the 
successful areas where you can take the osteo integration second thing we need to know where it is safe to place so we have to think about two vital structure over here there are two vital structures one is tooth when we are talking in terms of this uh, plating and second thing is our inferior nerve so first thing is tooth so in the alveolar bone here you can see these are our teeth so obviously in this area you cannot put the screw and second thing that we have to think about is our inferior nerve which originates from the lingula and from lingula it is going all the way to the mental foramen so this is also an area where placing the screw will not be advisable so we know where it is advisable to put the screw and we know the area where it is not advisable to put the screw one more thing we need to know about this inferior now is its distance from the cortical bone so let's say over here this is the cross section of the mandible that we had discussed so here we have a tooth okay this is also cross section of the tooth just get the idea this is the now and this is the tooth so if there is a inferior alveolar now let's say this is our inferior alveolar now right this inferior alveolar now two things we have to see its distance first thing we have to think about is its distance from the inferior border of the mandible so from inferior border of the mandible usually this inferior alveolar now is 8 to 10 mm away and the same now when we are talking in terms of distance from the buccal cortex from the buccal cortex this distance is 4 to 6 mm so this thing also we have to keep in mind when we are putting this osteosynthesis screws along with the mini plates so now we know the areas where the successful integration can take place areas where the screws are safe safely placed and the areas where it is not safe to put the osteosynthesis screws right now second thing we have to see although there are areas where we have seen which is safe where you can place let's say this area is safe this area is safe this area is safe all these areas are safe where you can put the screw but just like that putting the mini plate for the sake of putting is not going to be helpful we have to also see that it can successfully hold the fracture fragments together okay for that we have to understand the biomechanics of the forces acting on this mandible right so for that here you can see in this diagram there are two zones within the mandible one is the tension zone and other is compression zone so what are these tension zones and compression zones let's say this is your mandible and when you are chewing the load is being applied on the anterior part of the mandible and when the load is being applied we are pushing the mandible downwards right and because mandible is pushing being pushed downwards let's say there is this fracture line here because of the fracture line this fragments are not joined together and we have not fixed them yet so because of the forces they'll get separated from this place they'll get separated and the front part will go downwards like this and when it is going downwards like this this part will get separated as you can see here this part got separated this part remains fixed okay this part is not going to go anywhere but this part is getting downward movement so here you can see this separation taking place now because there is separation between the these two fracture fragments on the top side here we have the tension zone right this is the tension zone that we have seen same way let's say in the same example we are seeing like this the fragment is going downward like this right so these two parts are being separate from each other so here we have the tension zone at the same time in the lower border of the mandible this fragments are being pushed into each other because the mandible is going downwards so this is the area where compression is taking place so these are the tension zones and the compression zones while in function for example while chewing but even when in rest you have the forces acting on this mandible for example here you can see the lateral pterygoid attached to condyle it is pulling it the it anteriorly the temporal muscle which are attached on the coronary process will pull it superiorly masseter muscle will pull this portion superiorly and the digastric muscle will pull the anterior part 
downward so even when in rest also we are going to have this forces which are acting on mandible right now there was the uh, one experiment done by shampi in which he found out in which areas what kind of forces are being applied so this thing we have seen that on the superior border we have the tension zone in this area tension is prevalent in the lower area if we see we have the compression prevalent but along with them we have one more region that is between canine to canine it is the region where in addition to compression and the tension that we have just now seen there is another type of force being applied that is torsion you can see when the thing is being pushed like this we have the compression being applied when it is being pulled away from each other we have tension being applied same time when the things are being twisted like this as you can see the type of forces being applied are torsion so in the region between canine to canine we have this forces being applied that we are calling as torsion forces right so we have compression zone on the superior part here we have tension zone in the lower border we have compression zone and in the anterior border or the anterior part of the mandible we have tension compression as well as torsion forces being applied so this uh, experiment done by shampi on the model mandible he found out certain areas where tension was prevalent and he suggested in the areas because whenever the compression is taking place of course this two fragments themselves will keep them together on the same place but what we have to do is the area where tension is there where the fragments are being pulled away from each other somehow we have to bring them together and we have to fix them because compression is not going to cause displacement as such but when there is tension it can cause displacement and failure of the treatment that we have given for the reduction and fixation so what we want to do is we want to keep this fractured fragment together by fixing the plates in the tension zones now we need to know which are the tension zones so as per the experiment done by shampi what he found out was the areas just below the root apices as you can see here the area just below the root apices continuing all the way to external oblique ridge right and one lateral osteosynthesis line was also there on the posterior mandible this one mark that i am just now marking with the green color are the osteosynthesis lines also as we just now discussed because in the anterior mandible there are torsional forces there is another osteosynthesis line which is 4.5 mm below the first line is also there that is ant uh, anterior to the mental foramen we have this line which is osteosynthesis line so if you see from front you have in the anterior mandible you have this line uh, in between the mental foramen this first line and 4.5 mm below it we have the second line of osteosynthesis which continues posteriorly all the way till external oblique ridge and we also have one more line which is going below it so the superior line we are calling it as superior shampi line and the other line we are calling it as lateral shampi line so what are this osteosynthesis lines meant for so whenever there is fracture let's say the fracture is in the symphysis or parasymphysis region in that case we are going to put the plates in this osteosynthesis lines these are the areas where you have to put the plate or you have to do the plating if it is body fracture this is the area where you have to do the plating now if it doesn't mean that because here we are putting this two uh plates that we also have to put two plates in the angle region also no although there are two lines as it has been shown just now that is superior shampi line and uh, lateral shampi line it is advisable to just put the uh, plate on the superior shampi line only plate plating is supposed to be done single uh, single only that is just superior shampi line and not the lateral shampi line what are the advantages and disadvantages of plating in this two parts first thing is let's talk about the advantage of superior shampi line so advantages like whenever you are doing plating in this angle fracture let's say this is our angle fracture which is done uh, which is there and you are putting the plate on the superior 
शैम्पी लाइन सो वेन एवर वी आर डूइंग प्लेटिंग इन दैट केस देर आर चांसेज दैट आफ्टर प्लेटिंग देर आर चांसेज ऑफ स्प्लेइंग ऑफ द फ्रैक्चर ऑन द इन्फीरियर बॉर्डर स्प्लेइंग मीन्स ऑल दो दे आर बींग फिक्सड ऑन द टॉप पार्ट दे गेट सेपरेटेड अबिट ऑन द लोअर बॉर्डर बट ओवर टाइम दे कम टूगेदर एंड दिस प्लेइंग विल रिजॉल्व दैट इज द बेनिफिट ऑफ सुपीरियर शैम्पी लाइन वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट लेटरल शैम्पी लाइन देर आर टू डिसएडवाटेजेस फर्स्ट इज इट इज़ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू पुट द प्लेट ऑन द लेटरल एस्पेक्ट you have to do excessive retraction which will be very much troublesome and second thing is this playing that we just now talked about this playing will also take place when you are using this lateral shampi line plating but this playing which is taking place over here will not resolve when you are using the lateral shampi line osteosynthesis but it will resolve when you are using the superior shampi line okay so this was about the shampi's line of osteosynthesis and biomechanics of the forces acting on our mandible all the best